Hey YouTube, welcome back. I'm Roscoe and you're watching Roscoe Reviews. On today's project, we're going to be installing a solar system on my home. It is a five kilowatt system and I'm gonna walk you through the step-by-step -step process on how to set it all up. For the new system I'm putting up, I'm gonna be using an SMA Sunny Boy 5.0. So it's a 5,000 watt or five kilowatt string inverter. And that is going to be powered by 12 410 watt Jinko solar panels. Uh, I got the panels from Missouri Wind and Solar and I'll put a link for them in the description down below. The uh, SMA inverter is available on Amazon. And I'll put a link for that as well. You will need the wire to run from your solar panels to your inverter and then from your inverter to the breaker box from for me from the inverter to the breaker box i have to have a certified electrician do that part so they wire it in and then my power company they'll certify it for the power company so i will have them do that part it's a different wire for that uh, the connectors to put on the ends of the wire that plug into the solar panels and the crimpers to connect the connectors to the wires all of this is available on amazon uh, or you can order it through a missouri solar you will also need the racking system for your solar panels. I purchased this racking system on Amazon. It was two, uh, it was two purchases for, of the six panel kit of racking. And I will link them down below. With the racking kit comes the feet to mount the racks, the, to mount the rails to the roof. The, these are braces to put between the rails so you can make them longer tie them together. The really long bolts or screws to put the feet down into the roof. The T-shaped brackets go between the panels and then there's sort of S-shaped looking brackets that go on the end ones. Then it also comes with some extra little brackets like this. These are for like mounting micro inverters. Since we're going to be using a string inverter for this setup, we won't need those. Put those back in the box. And it came with two extra bags of bolts. The bolts are different lengths. They are in my hand. And they can be exchanged out for the bolts that are in these if your panels are different sizes. That makes this kit universal for all, all different size panels. So I'll have to check and see which size bolts I will need for the panels we're using today. It also came with some rubber gaskets that go underneath the feet, that go on the, the bottoms of the feet to keep to keep this from leaking. Uh, since I'm gonna be putting this on a carport sort of thing, I'm not too concerned about it. The, the roofing screws also have uh, gaskets on those. The, this is uh, set up great for putting it on a metal roof like we're going to be doing. Since it's on a carport kind of thing, I'm not too concerned about it leaking. If it drips a little bit, it's not that big a deal to me. But I'm going to go ahead and shoot some clear uh, roof and gutter silicone stuff in all the holes when I'm putting these in there. Here's how the different pieces in the kit go together. The rails are mounted vertically so that your solar panel clips go in the top in the skinny part and then on the the wide side that has the ridges in it is where the feet go so how they'll be connected this is one of the feet to connect the different pieces you'll see the one side is is fatter than the other side i slipped the the skinny side down in there and then that'll hold it in place and you tighten that top screw down and it'll tighten the foot up to the back of that and on these feet it has ridges that will hold it in place once it's tightened down. So once it's tight, tightened in place, the ridges will lock in, keeping the feet held at the right length. Then the brackets that hold the solar panels on work the same way. There's uh, the fat side and the skinny side. Just slip them in and then it'll lock in place and you tighten this down so that the T piece or the end piece grabs a hold of the top edge of the solar panel. The brackets that hold the two rails together fit in either this top rail, the top groove or 
the side groove where the feet go. I think it's probably better to put them in that side groove where the feet go. And then you tighten the screws down and it'll hold your two rails together in a straight line. You can either put the feet on the roof first and then try to connect the rail to them. But I think I'm going to put try to put the feet on each rail. So I'll put two feet on each rail and then I'll go up there and I'll leave them loose so that they can slide a little bit like that. So that I can get them the right where I want to put the screw in and then screw it down. So I'm going to go ahead and put all the feet on the rails now. I've measured and laid out my racking where I'm, I'm going to have it. I'm going to have two rows of six panels. So they will be laying uh, lengthwise across here. Each pair of rails is supposed to hold two up to 40 inch panels, but the rails are like 88 inches long or something like that. So they give you a few extra inches of play. So if you don't get them perfectly straight, you've got, you've got a little bit of room to work with. So that's okay. So far, the racking system that I got off of Amazon, I really like it. Uh, it's been all finger, finger bolts and they all use a six millimeter Allen wrench uh, for all these and for the brackets on the top. So it's been really easy so far. I really like it. It's a different racking system than what I used for my first ones. I mean, it's, it's similar, but the first ones that I did used a couple different sizes of nuts like this one. And it was a little bit tricky to get them on. You can see the difference in the rail. I mean, it's a similar system, but this is the one that I got from Missouri Wind and Solar uh, last year. This, this set that I got off of Amazon, I think I'm liking it better. It seems to, seems to be pretty much like everything only fits one way and it's been super easy to use, so I like it. My next step's gonna be screwing in the railing by, I'm gonna remove one of the existing screws in the roof and then you put one of these in between the foot and the hole in the roof so that it lines up and then you'll drive one of those big roofing screws down into there. They provide you with these fatter longer ones so it'll go through this and into there no problem if we can hit a stud on the other side of this they're all all these screws should be into the roofing slats the one buys that run across length or width wise so they sh those will all be in one of those if we can hit a stud behind it with one of these even better when i do this i'm also going to once i, I pull this out i'm going to squirt some of the roofing sealant in and around this hole. And then when I stand the rail up and put this in there, it'll seal it all up. These use a 10 millimeter socket. So the only things you'll need are a six millimeter Allen wrench and then a 10 millimeter socket to put these roof screws in. If you've got it in a drill like this, it'll be easier to do. When I'm doing this, I'm gonna loosen these a little bit so that I can slide it to where it needs to be. And then once I get this part screwed in, then I'll tighten these back down. And then I can go ahead and snug them up with the Allen wrench as well. As you're putting the rails up, when you put one in and you go to put the next one in, we're gonna slide those, slide those uh, brackets that hold the two things together all the way into one side first, because it'd be hard to get it in there. If you put two rails, if you butt them up together, you're not going to be able to get that bracket piece in between there unless it's already slid in there.
Using two power screwdrivers, one for the size to remove the old screws and one for the size to put in the new screws, and a ratchet with the Allen wrench needed to tighten the brackets on, I was able to install, to completely install enough bracketing for six, I'm sorry, for two rows of six, so 12 solar panels, and it took me about an hour. So it was really easy to put the racking together. Time to get the solar panels out and ready. I've run all my wires to the panels up from the inverter and I've run them in this conduit. I'm gonna have two strings of panels, so I gotta have one end of the wire on this end and one end of the wire down on that end. So I ran a piece of conduit down the rail to the other end. Now it's time to load the panels up here on the roof and that's going to be the awkward part because the panels are pretty big. But it's a little bit breezy, so hopefully it's not too bad. So to make this easier to load the solar panels up onto the roof, I built this little shelf thing. So my plan is to lift them up, like slide them up this thing halfway and set them on the edge here and then I'll be able to pull them up onto the roof from the top. Now it is a little bit breezy today so I have my dad come over here to help me so my I think I can lift them up here and set them on this and he can hold them there while I go up on top to pull it up onto the top. So we'll see how this works. I would definitely recommend having at least two people to load solar panels up onto the roof. Doing it by yourself is quite awkward and heavy. Having the ramp with the shelf on it so that we can slide them up and set them on it was very helpful. I would recommend anybody build one of those. You could build it out of a couple two by fours and it wouldn't be that difficult. In the end, we got all 12 panels up onto the roof and secured to the racking. It only took about two hours to do all 12 panels, so you could probably figure with one person working on the roof, about 10 minutes per panel to get them secured down. For this step in my process, I'm going to be mounting my string inverter. This is, again, is an SMA Sunny Boy 5.0 inverter to mount this we're going to need to kind of take it apart a little bit in order to mount it to the wall so we'll remove the screws off this bottom panel we're going to use that set that aside then this bottom third of the unit comes off so there's a couple of screws on each side so i'm going to take these off and then you mount this bottom portion to the wall and it's pretty light it's I mean, mostly empty, as you can see. The top part is the part that's heavy that's got the, the inverter part in it, and it hooks on to this part. So this is the part that mounts to the wall. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this part off by removing these screws, and then we can get this mounted to the wall. Unfortunately, when I installed my first system, I did not leave enough room here between the breaker panel and the inverter to put another one, and I don't have a whole lot of room over here because I've got a blasting cabinet and a kayak up there. Didn't really want to move that stuff, so I'm going to go over on this other wall. I slid my air compressor down a couple of feet so that I have room on the wall right here to mount the new one. So the, the new inverter, this is the bottom portion of it, has mounting plates on the back, and we're going to need to get that into the studs. So if I look up here, there's studs coming down. Those two right there is what I'm going to be mounting to. So so come down here uh, may take me a little little bit to find them and I'm certainly not going to be able to do it holding the phone in one hand so I'm going to go ahead and get this one mounted up here and we'll have a look at it I've now got the inverter mounted to the wall once you get it mounted the bottom part mounted to the wall you just set the top part on top of there and then put those four screws back in now that it's mounted we can plug in some of the rest of this stuff there is a cord taped up on top here and it comes from the top part down to the bottom part and it's going to plug in right there. I'm not going to try to do it while I'm holding the camera. Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and put these on there. I don't know if they leave them separate so that you can wire them up and then plug them in, but I'm going to have it all wired up before anything gets turned on anyway. And I think it'll be easier to wire them if they're already in there. So I'm going to put these in there first. You just shove these in and then tighten the screws on the side with a Phillips head screwdriver. Uh, the one on the left side here, this is your DC in, so it's going to go from the solar panels are going to come into here. And then this one on the other side, 
is your AC out. This is what's going to run back to the breaker box. This one over here is if you want to wire in a plug that you can run. Uh, well, if you if you lose power, you can run directly off the solar panels. So you can wire in just a regular 110 plug to this up here. Um, I didn't do it on my last one, and I've not missed it. So I don't know if I'm going to run out and do it on this one. Also, when you go to put the cover back on this, the the cover part has a, a cord that comes out of the back of it, and that will plug in to this top part right here where it says display. I now have all my panels mounted on the roof, and I'm ready to start wiring. I have run two strings of panels, so I'm going to have two pairs of wires. The red is your positive wire, so the positives will go here. We're going to be in A and B, in A and B. So I'll have a positive there and a negative there to match the pair. And the same with the other side. So it'll be red, red, and then black, black coming into here. When on the other end of the wire, I'll have to mount uh, these male and female connectors depending on the line. So the positive line coming off of the solar panels is a male. So on the other end of the red one, I'll have to put a female connector. And on the other end of the black one, I'll have to put the male. And I will show how to crimp those on there when I get up on the roof. For now, I'm going to wire these up. Before you do wire anything on here, I would recommend turning off. There is a, this is the kill switch. So you'll turn it off before you do anything. Now the panels, the panels are not plugged in. The wires are just laying up there on the roof. These are all dead. The wires aren't connected to anything on the other end. You want to wire it up here first before you connect the panels on the roof. Now, if you're wanting to connect the panels on the roof first, then you may want to do something like this. On my first system, I did disconnect boxes for the strings coming in. So the panels come in and there's a disconnect and then it runs into this. Uh, so you can do something like that if you're wanting to wire the panels first. If you wire the box first or the inverter, I should say, if you're wiring the inverter first, then you can, uh, these are dead. So you can just go ahead and wire them in and then uh, wire the panels on after because they're just going to plug them in and then they'll be hot to here but it does go through the disconnect on the side like i said so you can go ahead and have all that wired up before you go working on the ac side and it's safe to do that because there's nothing coming in because of that disconnect on the side so once you have your inverter wired up on this side it should look something like this two reds going into the a b on the positive side and two blacks going into the a and b on the negative side Make sure the A's are a pair and the B's are a pair. One thing that my utility company requires is to have a hard disconnect located on the outside of the building so that the utility company can get to it if they need to. It looks like this, so you just pull, pull this thing out to shut off the panels. The inverter has an automatic shut off, so if power goes out, it won't be feeding back into the system anyway. This is just, uh, the utility company requires this as an extra backup so that they can turn it off uh, even if I'm not home if they need to work on the system for some reason. Had the electrician come out and wire up the AC side of the inverter. And it runs over here to a disconnect that's mounted on the back of my garage and wired into the breaker panel. 
I've gotten the okay from my utility company, so I have turned the breaker on to my panels. Power is now flowing. I'm pulling down 2,600 watts right now. It's been running for about one day, so I pulled 20 kilowatt hours so far. Uh, it's been running for a little less than a day, actually. We are in the winter time and it is a little bit cloudy today, so I'm not getting my full uh, 4,900 worth of panels that I put up there, but I, you can't expect to get the full thing in the winter time. So, so far it's a success. I am spinning the meter backwards currently. I hope you found this install helpful. Please like and subscribe and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.